Just over a month ago, I went to a party, and uh, it's a pretty weird thing for me to do. I was a really crowded house party, and I went in, and I had a really good time. And I met some cool people, and I was really bothered by the uh, thought that I would never see them again. And the problem was, actually, that I would see them again, but I wouldn't know it. I wouldn't recognize them. So I went online to do some research, and uh, I knew where to go. I typed in face blindness, and uh, it's really cool, because I was somewhat aware of the condition already. Uh, I'd read about it and wondered if it applied to me, but I actually denied it. I was like, uh, sure, 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 I have some difficulty in recognizing people, but uh, I'm not as fucked up as this guy in the science magazine. Well, I followed up on it this time, and uh, it's really cool. Even the name for it is cool. Prosopagnosia, as in, I'm sorry, I have prosopagnosia. It's a lot cooler than saying I can't remember your name to someone I've apparently known for years. And it's a lot cooler than, uh, remind me again how we met. It's a line I should never use more than once, but uh, it's really hard to tell. Reading these websites really helped me to understand what's been going on all my life. I can see faces, but I can't make much sense of them. I can't recognize faces. And I can't connect them to a name or anything else about a person. Um, especially revealing was the page about how do face blind people ever recognize anybody anyway. And there's lots of ways. Um, distinctive hair or beard, glasses, jewelry, um, clothing or general style. I rely on those a lot. Um, voice is good, um, posture, the way people move, and uh, clues from conversation about friends or interests or situations we have in common. I use all of those. I thought everyone did. But most people have a shortcut. You can recognize faces, and I need those things to figure out who people are every time. But I'm getting to understand a lot of things, like why high school dances were impossible, even a classroom was too much. I showed up for class early a lot, and I could go into the wrong classroom and not notice anything wrong until the teacher showed up. And why dating was so awkward when I even tried. And why so many movies and TV shows never make any fucking sense. And why I often prefer to be socially isolated. Because alone, I can escape from the uh, constant low-level paranoia that comes with being around people. And psychiatric medication doesn't do shit for that, because I really am being watched by people and I don't know who they are. <laughs> Damn! I hadn't had a phone for about eight years, and my sister got me a cell phone so I could keep in touch. And I was like, shit, I'm supposed to carry this thing with me? Where am I gonna hide now? But it's, uh, it turned out okay, because when people call me up, they tell me who they are. And Carrie, my ex, got me uh, an email account and then told everybody, so I had to use it. And that's turned out okay too, but uh, you're never gonna get me on fucking Facebook. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's the name. Okay, for an example of the kind of thing that happens to me, um, this, uh, this, was, uh, this was years ago, but it, uh, it left a strong uh, impression on me. Uh, an older guy approached me, and he seemed to know me, and he started talking to me, and I had no idea who he was. I didn't think he was a teacher from high school or anything, but I couldn't figure him out. And he wouldn't shut up. I couldn't just nod and smile and, and sneak away like I usually do. He kept talking and talking. And finally, he said something about uh, being at work with my dad. So that's a great clue, because I think now I know this guy. He's my dad's best friend from work, and he comes over for a couple of drinks sometimes, like every Friday for about three years. What the fuck is he doing here? Because context is important. Um, a lot of times I can figure out somebody who works in a store or hangs out at the same coffee shop all the time and totally miss them on the street or anywhere else. And people must think I'm pretty fucking rude. And fairly often, people come up and talk to me, and we can have a fine conversation, uh, if a little awkward on my part, 
and they leave, and I still have no idea who I was talking to. Um, a lot of times I can figure it out part way through, like if you mention uh, a show we went to, or where you work or something, that helps. But if you talk about the weather, I'm fucked. Everybody's got weather. And sometimes I'll meet someone who's a painter or something, and a short time later I'll meet someone who's really into industrial music. And it turns out we have a bunch of friends in common. We go to the same places. And I might wonder that I never run into them together. It seems they have a lot in common. And eventually it dawns on me that they're actually the same person. <laughs> Sometimes I don't figure it out. I have to be told. Like, it's, uh, it's really embarrassing. Like, uh, like, of course, Dave is, is Dave. How could you not know that? I don't know. One of them's got a nickname. He wears a different shirt or something. It's confusing. Leave me alone. It's funny when somebody develops uh, a sudden interest in something new. And for a little while, I think I've met a new friend. The worst, though, is when uh, someone I think I know turns out to be two totally different people. Uh, I don't have anything funny to say about that. <laughs> people who identify by their long hair, whether it's loose or tied back, um, it really throws me if they change it especially when they do it right in front of me, like a fucking shape-shifting reptile. <laughs> it's not quite so intense, but it's the same effect, and it's really weird. And one guy wouldn't stop fucking with his hair. He untied it, tied it up again, untied it, fluffed it out, tied it back. I thought I was on acid. <laughs> My hands weren't doing anything weird, and everything else was okay, but this guy kept melting and changing, and I had to leave. And it's quite a challenge to change my own appearance, because I'm not always 100% uh, sure to begin with. I don't want to do anything to make it worse. A necktie is like an impenetrable disguise. Uh, you might be able to find me in wedding photos, but I probably won't. <laughs> but I often have a beard, and I shave it off once in a while, and that's really a trip. Uh, I'll be giddy for days. It's, it really is a natural high, because, uh, well, I don't get the pasties or dry mouth, but uh, the mental confusion and paranoia, definitely. But I shaved it like this uh, last fall, once just for fun, and uh, I'm keeping it, because now I can spot myself in the mirror every fucking time. Usually I had to do it by elimination, like I'm the only one brushing my teeth, so... But if I'm in a room with big mirrors and other people, it's like, that guy sure looks uncomfortable. <laughs> oh. But now I get a definite ID, and it's been really reassuring. So if you see me staring into a mirror sometime, it's not narcissism, it's more like uh, curiosity, I guess. <laughs> Just before Christmas, in the grocery store, a guy said hi to me, Merry Christmas. And I nodded and smiled and did the usual, and um, I could have left it at that. I could have just walked away, and under the circumstances, it wouldn't even seem like I was sneaking away. But um, I didn't. I came closer to try and figure him out, and I asked him, Tim? And it was him. It was Tim from Blue Streak. I've known him for 20 years, and I told him, I told him about what I discovered, and um, he was kind of puzzled because uh, he said I always seem to recognize him, and uh, I do try to give that impression. But it's only if he's in the record store that I'm 100% sure. So to, uh, to figure him out in a grocery store with winter clothes on, it's like fucking double bonus points. But although now I know what the problem is, it's still difficult. So. If I'm avoiding your gaze, or if I'm staring at you like a deer in the headlights, I'm not trying to freak you out. And if I ignore you completely, it's not on purpose. It's just that I don't know who the fuck you are, and I need your help. Thank you.